about dialogue and characterization. Uh, characterization just meaning how you build and develop characters in a story. Our objectives would be to understand how dialogue can be used in writing to describe characters, learn how to recognize character development and dialogue when reading, and write dialogue that uses characterization. They read Blood in the Brain. What did you guys think of that? I thought it was pretty interesting. It like was kind of unpredictable to mm -hmm. me and how I thought it would. I thought the character was pretty interesting. Yeah. Well, for right now, we won't be focusing on comprehending the story a whole lot. We'll be mostly focusing on the main character, Anders, and seeing how his dialogue developed him as a character. So I want you guys to click on this Google Doc right here and pick one of the highlighted dialogue quotes and then paste it onto this next slide. So if you go to there, you can see that there's a few that are highlighted, so just copy and paste. What do you notice about all of these? Is there something you can find in common about Anders, just based off of these three things he said? Uh, in a couple of them, he's like pretty sarcastic. Yeah, he's really sarcastic. He doesn't really take anything seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything's like a joke, everything he says. And that's he didn't really seem like scared at all. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know, he didn't yeah, didn't take it seriously. Yeah. And that was like kind of the big thing I wanted to focus on here is just how you didn't have to read it in the text for you to figure that out. It was just based on what he was saying. You could tell that he was a sarcastic person, that he didn't take anything seriously just based off of his dialogue. The way people speak says a lot about who they are, and so one really big thing that shows that is dialect, the speech patterns, and writing. And so it can indicate something like where people are from. So if you say, where are y'all coming from, he asked, you might assume that that person is from the South because they use y'all and they take off the G and I-N-G. It's something that you don't have to like come out and say, oh, this guy is from the South. If he says that, you might just assume that. Also, time period is another thing you can gather from dialect. So, will thou goest with thee to the show, she said. That obviously isn't something that people right now would say if they did, it'd be kind of weird, but you might assume that person's from medieval times or that it was like a really long time ago, so not present day. Um, also, social class is a really big thing that you can gather from dialogue. So, madam, you look quite exquisite this evening, he told her. This madam here shows that the person he's talking to is someone who has a title maybe, or uh, he uses words like quite and exquisite, which is something that someone highly educated would say. Someone who maybe isn't highly educated wouldn't use words like that. Do you guys have any other examples? Yeah. Um, you could also use like certain words to uh, showcase emotion, or which could also showcase relationship. Like if it's someone you love, like you're gonna use like softer, more like loving, caring words. Mm -hmm. And if it's someone you don't like, like you're not gonna worry about like being nice to them, or you're not gonna worry about like using nice words. To them. Right, right. That kind of goes into my next point. Just tone. So what the character thinks or feels about certain things or situations. So if we go back to Anders in line. He's 
kind of see right here. He's in line and the women are talking and he gives a sarcastic comment back. And so if you were reading that, you wouldn't maybe assume that Anders was fond of what the women were saying because he's very sarcastic, very kind of rude back to the women. In the, so you can just tell like by his tone and the way he's talking that he doesn't necessarily approve of what they're talking about. He thinks that they're kind of silly and trivial. And like you said too, like you're going to talk really lovey to someone that you like and someone that you don't like. You might be really short with them, have short clip sentences or something like that. And so tone is a really big way to indicate what a character thinks without having the narrator have to say it. Also, physical appearances can be in there. So, you know, you read a text and a lot of times it's like, oh, she had long, flowy black hair and her skin was like, of course, like whatever. Like you can say all those things, but you can also say it in dialogue without having to say it um, with the narrator. So your hair looks stiff, she told him. How much gel did you use? You can tell that the character has a lot of gel in their hair without explicitly saying that. Do you guys have any other examples? Like when you talked about you can use it to showcase um, status, like you could talk about like, oh, their clothes were really dingy and gross and there's holes in them to show that like, maybe they're should be homeless or they may not have much money or they like don't, or even if they do have money, they just like don't care enough to like upkeep their physical appearance or the opposite, um, where if someone like has a lot of money, they like, wear nice things or you can even go as deep as to be like, um, they were wearing nice things, but I could tell that they were worn to show that like, they showcase that they have high social status, but mm -hmm. they really like they're kind of struggling. Yeah. Kind of yeah, that's a good thing too. Like to mention physical appearance can say something about social class or whatever. You can just say it in dialogue and like ask questions or make comments about it. And I think a really big one that dialogue is way is personality traits because when you're writing something, it's really difficult to actually tell someone as a narrator what a person is like because you can say someone is stubborn but you feel like you need examples to show how they're stubborn or something. And so in the story the reader can assume that Anders is really cynical because of his sarcastic and negative comments. He's like about to die. Like he has a gun pointed at his head and he's still making like sarcastic comments and laughing about it. But like we've talked about, you don't have to like actually sit there at the beginning and say, this is Anders. Anders is very cynical and he always likes to laugh about everything, even in really difficult situations. You just pick that up by reading. And also something could be if a character talks a lot, you might say that they're an outgoing person because they're always chatting and putting their input in. Um, repeating something over and over if the character is really insistent they're like no this is how it is and the other person's like no whatever like this is how I think and they keep going you can say the character's really stubborn there are lots of ways that you can do that do you guys have any other ideas how personality traits can show in dialogue
have a character and a personality trait? Yeah, Michaela. Okay. Now I'm going to write a short conversation between the character that you just created and another person uh, that's going to show how the character expresses that personality trait based on their conversation. Uh, so the scenario is the class walks into the room on Monday and sees that there is a 2,000 word paper due at the end of the week. So I'm going to show you how this might work. So I have Beth who is easily excitable and I might say Beth walked into the room and we'll say into history class on Monday to see who there was. Two thousand more paper due. By Friday. So I might think about what Beth would say about that. She's not going to say, "Oh no, like I hate writing papers. I don't want to do that." Beth might say something like, "I love papers. I can't wait to start." Beth has a best friend named Lee. She said, Why? Papers are awful. I just want to remember this time. And then Beth is going to say, I have. So many ideas about the Civil War. I'll probably finish tonight. So that's just like a little snippet of conversation. Um, but you can tell just from reading Beth's comments that Beth is very easily excited person, or maybe even not easily excited, maybe she's easily excited about school, she's very responsible and very motivated or something, but I want you guys to try to work on a conversation on your own and try to incorporate that personality trait that you chose into the way that the character talks. So I'll give you a few minutes to do that. Are we using the same scenario? Yep, same scenario. Let me know if you have any questions about it while you're writing. Lengthwise, I would say try to do like probably like four or five sentences.
go first? Yeah, you go first. Okay. Um, so my character's named Roger, and he's the angry about everything. There's a paper dude, God, that's so stupid, I hate this class, Roger yelled. The girl sitting next to him, Ashley, wasn't as upset. She was a straight A student. I already finished it two weeks ago, Ashley snapped. Yeah, well, you're a goody two-shoes who doesn't have any friends, Roger spit. Miss Simmons, Roger called me a goody two-shoes, Ashley screamed. She is, she's a goody two-shoes and a brat, Roger said proudly. Good, yeah. He was not only angry about the paper, but he was also angry at Ashley's comment to him, which shows that he was like actually just angry about everything. Good. Michaela, did you wanna go now? Thank you. 